What's happening, everybody? We are one week away from the Illinois season. And in fact, if you're an Ohio resident, your season opens tomorrow. So what we're going to do is we're going to revisit a hunt from a couple years ago that was an early season hunt that I think a lot of us can learn from. This is Clinton Fawcett opening day in Illinois. And there's three main points that we want to make that kind of factored into Clinton's success. Number one, food plot, right? And we've all heard about food plots. Some of us have the opportunity to do them. Some of us don't. If you can't do food plots for whatever reason, Todd covered it a couple weeks ago, acorns or natural food sources, regardless of where you're hunting, deer need to eat, okay? So number one, find the hot food source. Number two, trail camera data is key. You know, when it comes to killing these deer early season, you got to be on their pattern, right? You got to know where those deer are going to be. And the earlier in the season, the more patternable these deer become. As it gets closer and closer to the rut, they become a little bit more difficult uh, to predict where they're going to be on a day-to-day -day basis. Meaning, if you see a deer in a food plot tonight, he may not be there tomorrow. But early in the season, before we get a lot of pressure, they are definitely patternable, but you got to have that intel. If you don't live close to your property, you don't have the ability to get out there, put boots on the ground and scout, you got to have trail camera data. The third thing that played a role in this one, and unfortunately we don't control it, but that's the weather. That first good cold front in October is one of the best times to catch a big buck on their feet uh, early in the season. So we've got good food, recent sightings on trail camera, cold weather, no pressure, it's opening day. So let's relive one of our favorite hunts of all time here on Bowhunter Dive. All right, well, hey guys, it's uh, about four o'clock on October 1st. We just got back here in the blind. Pretty excited, first end of the year, of course. And uh, I can definitely use the uh, peace and quiet and a nice night to sit in the blind. So we're back here hunting over uh, food plots, half rye and oats and half radishes. So we've got two big bucks in here that both have been here quite a bit, and that would be a cow rick and a deer we call Billy the Kid. Both the deer like to move in the daylight a lot, and uh, this is a really good early season spot for us. So we've got a good northeast wind about 15 mile an hour, high pressure and sunny, 68 degrees. I would expect to see several deer if we don't. Uh, I'm going to be really surprised. Other than that, kind of short forwards right now, so I'm just going to kick back, relax, and enjoy the night. Well, it's about 5.45. So far tonight, we've had two big does come out. We're down around the far of the food plot. The wind gusted a few times. It got a little spooky. They didn't blow or anything, they just kind of turned around. I stepped it back into the timber. The bucks have been coming out right straight across from us, so hopefully they do that. Side. Another doe wanders up 
loves the deer we come in here after. That's a non-typical we call Billy the Ken. We named that deer after my brother-in-law, Ty. Three years ago, when Ty killed his first nice buck on the web show, he passed that deer up first. He was a little, like, 110 inch, three-year-old. Last year, Frank and I had him all over us out here. Several different times we passed him up. One night I had him in the snow right in front of the stand. I let him go. This year he put a nice non-typical side, side on. We don't know why, but we decided that we were gonna try to take that deer. We were gonna wait on Ty, let Ty try to kill him, but I, I told Ty, I said, bud, if I get the chance, I'm gonna, I'm gonna take him. And we've had a rough go the last few weeks. I, I just couldn't be happier. No. Oh. <laughs> Ducked the string a little bit. These deer are gonna come out here tonight. We just got this blind in here three weeks ago. My, we've had some rough times, and my brother and Ty and I got this deer in here, or got this blind in here, and we insulated the inside, but, but we left the windows up and these deer have been coming out here tonight and they've been smelling us. And that deer, he, he smelled that the, the insulation inside this blind when he walked up here. I should have held a little lower, but I just didn't think he really think he was gonna drop, but man. Oh, what a beautiful deer, Frankie. Gosh. <laughs> Opening night of bow season. What a way to get it started. I can't believe that just happened. How did we just do that? Wow. Put one down for the deep, baby. Today's October the 2nd. I can't say that I ever thought we would be sitting behind a buck on the second day of bow season. It's something that we always talk about getting on deer like this early season and finding one that's on a daylight pattern. And uh, it's just pretty surreal to be sitting here behind this deer. I mean, I, I we knew we were in the ball game last night and I had thought all day at work yesterday that, it would, that it, we had a chance of it happening, but for it to happen, I guess I just wasn't expecting. I, I always go to the field with high expectations every night. And most of the time, as most deer hunters know, that doesn't always uh, pan out with a kill. But last night, we were blessed enough to be able to harvest this big deer. The history we, that we have with this deer and the, and the story behind it is just unbelievable for me. My brother-in-law, Ty, killed his first buck and uh, this deer had come out first and he had passed him up and that was just a great night for us uh, to be able to share that experience with him and to film it and then for us to see him several times last year and have the opportunity to hunt him and we decided not to take him and then you know last night was pretty special we really needed this deer can't say that we needed it there's uh you know i've learned there's a lot more things in life than shooting deer but it was just a blessing for frank and i to be able to sit there and take our time and enjoy the night and to have this guy walk out and present us with a good shot. All right, guys, I think there's three main takeaways from this particular hunt that can help any of us be successful in the early season. A couple of these things that we can control, some of them that we cannot control, right? So the stuff that we can control, let's start with food sources. Todd talked about it a couple weeks ago when we revisited his early season Wisconsin hunt. He was hunting a natural food source, being acorns. In this particular case, Clinton was hunting a food plot that the deer were eating heavily in that early part of the year. And regardless of whether it's a, a man-made food source, like a food plot, or it's a natural food source, like acorns or other natural browse, finding where those deer are actively feeding in the evenings, in early season, is a huge key to success. So that's key number one. Number two, it kind of goes with number one, but it's trail camera data. You know, most of us aren't fortunate enough to live you know, right where we hunt or close to where we hunt where we can get out there every day and glass and look for what these deer are doing in these fields. That's where trail camera data is just super, super important for early season. 
knowing what your active food sources are. It's one thing to find the acorns. It's another thing to know that the deer are actually using them. If you have the opportunity to use cellular trail cameras, they're a huge benefit, especially for a guy like me where some of my hunting spots are several hours away from home and I can't get there very often to check trail cameras. If you're lucky enough to, to live closer and be able to get out there, trail camera data is huge because early in the season, before those deer start getting pressured, um, they are a lot more patternable. They're gonna repeat their pattern for a longer period of time than they are later in the year. So as we start getting into mid and late October, those bucks aren't doing the same thing every day. But I tell you what, maybe those first couple days in October, if you find a good hot food source, whether it be acorns, a food plot, or anything else, you could pretty much bet that those bucks are gonna be on that same basic pattern. So food sources, knowing the pattern, and then the third one, and unfortunately we can't control this, but it's that first good cold front in October. You know, in this particular case, it happened to fall on opening day, which I believe was a weekend, which was like the perfect storm, right, for these guys. But let's just say opening day is 80 degrees, and it's hot, and you don't want to get out, or it falls during the week and you can't get out. Let's say October 4th, 5th, 6th, something like that. You get that first good cold front of the year, We've historically seen bucks on their feet every year. Todd's killed good bucks. Tyler Rector's killed deer. Obviously, we just saw Clinton. That first good cold front in October is just such an awesome, critical time to get out there and get on those food sources. So those are the three things that you know can really help you be successful. Of course, there's no uh, silver bullet. There's no magic formula that's going to guarantee that you're going to be able to kill a big buck in the early part of October, or really at any point for that matter. But if you use that type of information and try to create some sort of system. Be careful on how you get in and get out of your stands. Don't leave too much scent behind. You know, be careful, be smart, and hunt at the right times. You definitely can kill a big buck in early October as Clinton just showed us. So uh, again, guys, good luck to everybody that is going out hunting. The best time of the year is right around the corner. Illinois season is so close, I can almost taste it. Like I said, uh, Ohio is going to be opening tomorrow after we launch this video. We've got a lot of other places like Kentucky's already open. Uh, so good luck to everybody that's hunting out there. Make sure you stay safe, wear your safety harness. Uh, as always, bow hunter die. We will see you guys next week. I was sitting on my tree stand thinking like, all that doe footage that film, you should put a pulse. Todd shoots a fawn at 70 yards. And like never have it happen. Just like be like, no, I can't That's shoot this thing. <laughs> I, I know. We should just do one for fun. You know, ha, we got you. Todd's never shoot a fun at 70 yards. Bond to the video. Todd kills Bambi. <clears throat>